welcome back to Creating in Color, sharing the creative endeavors of people of color. I'm your host, KB, and we are returning to part two with James Paris, a writer, director, and animator whose past projects include The Lion King, Pink and Blue, The Road to El Dorado, Shimmer and Shine, and Doug Unplugged, to list a few. What does your daily routine look like? Oh, my daily routine. Oh, gosh. Well, I guess that really depends on what <laughs> what gig I have. <laughs> you know, different gigs are going to have different routines. Do you mean like job or or just your life? Um, we could do your nine to five versus your passion projects. Yeah, because I mean, like, yes, your daily routine, if you're going into work, is going to be different than your daily routine on your days off that you're working on your own passion stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So, um Yes. Uh, if you're working, as I have recently, on a television series, uh, your daily routine is interfacing with the people in the nucleus of the series, which uh, in the particular paradigm of the show that we're just finishing uh, at DreamWorks, there's a storyboard team and then animation director and some comp leads, you know, that kind of thing. And it's sort of, there's this partner studio that is on the other side of the world. <laughs> <laughs> that is asleep while you're going in to do your day job and they're waiting for you to do all the stuff involving giving notes on shots and preparing other episodes and blah 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 so your whole day job is about setting up the partner studio on the other side of the world for success so that when you go to sleep they go into work mm. and you're basically preparing the stuff for them to do whether it be the notes on shots that they've already submitted or preparing shots they're about to work on. Uh, So it's a lot of prep, a lot of talking in the form of giving notes to lots of different artists if you're, you know, giving direction to a studio. So that is, there's a lot of data that has to be, you know, given for other people to interpret, at least in my particular daily routine. So um, that is very, very different from the daily routine when I'm on my own time and now I am a, a writer a producer on, of my own content. Depending on the day, it might be a day for writing. It might be a day for, and then when, when I say writing, it might be a day for just literally daydreaming and just putting random things on paper that may or may not make sense. Sometimes that's the mode you're in where you're just trying to reach out with your mind and, and, and figure out large chunks of story about like, what is this movie even going to be? What is the show even going to be? What are the, who's the real character here? And why do I care? You know, those are not like things you immediately start typing down millions of words. Those are things you got to sit and dwell and just find, what do I care about? But then later on in the a project, there are moments where you're like, okay, I'm doing pages today. I am, I'm blocking out a new section of the story in an outline form, or I'm taking that scene that I already know works. I'm going to write that scene. You know, and those are, that's just, now you're just doing the work. Now you just sit down, put your headphones on or whatever, whatever you got to do to make yourself feel good about the thing. (laughs) Aromatherapy, I don't, whatever your thing is, (laughs) or some Mozart and get to work and start putting words on paper to try to get your ideas out. And then, you know, you'll probably end up doing it again and again in another iteration and make it suck less. (laughs) But But there are days that are just like the let me get words out days. And I'm like, okay, this day is not going to end before this scene is out. I need the scene to be out of me on a page today, no matter what it looks like. Um, Those are different days than let me sit around and actually allow my mind to float on the winds of creativity. (laughs) And And by the way, I need to do both. There are days where I just need to sit around and daydream all day long and maybe go watch a movie and then daydream some more and then maybe write two words or two ideas about something that you know I, I got in my head to try to get it out and then there are days where i know like okay you've thought about this long enough now you're just procrastinating now go write them you know what i mean mm-hmm. just try to write something and then you know send it to somebody you trust to get feedback and maybe some days you really need to just get on the horn on a call with somebody you trust to talk the story through to talk about what you've written and and, and somebody might say well i don't understand this part what do you what's going on here and then you ha- it'll force you to have to explain it and then sometimes in the in the process of having to explain it you're actually doing some of that internal work because now you have to make it come out of your mouth <laughs> and you realize as it's coming out of your mouth oh that's not really what it was when it was in the back of my head now i realize there's more work to be done you know mm-hmm. so there are different there are different days when you're writing um it just depends on where you're at in the story and sometimes i i go between like a third of the day can be the daydreaming part on one project a third of the day could be i need to get words down on another project and a third of they can be a conversation with somebody about yet another project <laughs> you know and they can all like the different chicks can be fed at different stages you know wow <laughs> what an answer <laughs> <laughs> uh what support or resources do you recommend for 
not only someone trying to break into animation or entertainment industry, but even to get their project off the ground. Oh, let's see. Well, I mean, there was that one, you know, uh, set of books, obviously, uh, Pressfield's The War of Art and Turning Pro. Those are great books. Um, I highly recommend. Like, even if it ends up being stuff like, oh, I kind of knew this. This is stuff I already know. They're, it's good to... He encapsulates these ideas in a very easy to understand and like it's good for you to just regurgitate that idea about fighting resistance because resistance like gravity never goes away. It's always there with you. And I'd say no matter what your craft, learning how to push past your internal resistance is always a good thing to be reminded of. It never gets old because inertia never gets old. (laughs) Inertia always wants you to just stay still and not move. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like we're all going to die, for example. You know, like there's certain things you cannot avoid. However, you can fight it tooth and nail until the inevitability. So, for example, uh, what's the, what is it, Game of Thrones? Um, uh, Arya, what is it that the, the, her trainer says to her? I actually but, have not seen Game of Thrones. Oh, oh okay, okay, sorry. sorry. I, I have this, reasons this, why, but we don't have to get okay, into okay. it. <laughs> so, so, basically, quick nutshell, there's a character who is basically a young woman who um, is, you know, petite, small, and the idea is that she's trying to train to be a fighter and to be a sword fighter, and of course, she's too small to hold a sword, and, you know, so there's a, there's a particular character who kind of gives this sort of obi-wan style philosophy on just how to how to be a little scrappy fighter in the world you know and it's uh there's this phrase that there's like there's the god of death and he says to her repeatedly eventually death comes for us all but what do we say to the god of death not today Mm. and it's a great philosophy in the show because yeah eventually the god of death will win but not today Today, I'm beating death, you know? I can't speak for the rest of the week. (laughs) (laughs) And it's great to do that, I think, on on that level of, like, don't try to do your whole career in one day, because that's not going to happen anyway. Mm -hmm. But you can do today, today. And so you say to to inertia, you say to resistance, you say to gravity, I'm not going to let you beat me today. I'm going to actually do one thing that I said I was going to do today. I might not get the entire script written today, but I'm going to do these pages today. And then tomorrow I'm going to fight you again. But today I am not going to just hide in my closet. <laughs> and then you know what? All those days add up. You say not today on Tuesday, not today on Wednesday, not today on Thursday. And before you know it, you put seven days together of doing a little thing. And those that little thing over seven days, it means a week of a thing, right? And then put a few weeks of those things together and put a few months together. And before you know it, a whole year of not today, you've beaten death for 365 years. It's pretty good. Or you've beaten resistance, you know? So, I mean, definitely Stephen Pressfield, War of Art for sure, Art of War. No, War of Art, right. (laughs) Art of War is Sun Tzu. (laughs) Um, Also, I'm trying to think of who, you know, John Cleese, you know, Monty Python, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Years ago, he did a great, um, there's a talk, and you can find it on YouTube. It's uh, it's like, usually I think it's subtitled in a non-English language. And it's, I think, how to be creative. John, like if you just Google or YouTube search how to be creative, John Cleese, that talk that he gave will come up. And he does, it's a great talk he gave to some institute about how he thinks creativity works. And he, it's a great breakdown of like what he feels, how the mind operates in these two different modes, like the open mode and the closed mode. And not to get too, you know, psychological about it because I'm not a psychiatrist. But um, um, he talks about the open mode and the closed mode. Like um, the open mode is like the mode where you allow yourself to play. And the closed mode is the mode of get it done, you know? And there are two different ways of thinking and you can't, some jobs need you to be open Mm -hmm. to get to do that. And some jobs need you to be closed. So he, um, what's, (laughs) he's talking about like, if you're in a motorcycle and you're going to like jump over a ramp and like jump a canyon, (laughs) he says, you know, like if you're coming up with a story, stay in the open mode. But when you're on that motorcycle and now you've already made all the calculations and you got to jump the canyon and you start pressing on the gas or whatever. Now's not the time to start daydreaming about like what other possibilities can we do? Like what other ways can we like, is this right? Yeah. <laughs> you got to commit that you are now heading like it's the DeLorean. You got to get up to 88 miles an hour or it's, you know, it's like the end of Back to the Future 3 mm-hmm. where um, the, the train has to get up to 88 or else it's going to go into the canyon. Mm-hmm. Now's not the time to rethink it. <laughs> now is the time to put more coal or wood in the in the engine and go as fast as you can because you got to get up to 88 and i think that's a good uh, it's a good thing to remember like there are times where you're working on a creative thing where this is the time to be open and be like a million possibilities and just daydream you know what i mean talk to other people but then once you've started to make a thing 
that's the time to be get to 88 miles an hour you know what i mean and so anyway that that talk by john cleese is a great talk i think it's just called how to be creative speaking of youtube there's a great youtube channel called what's uh film courage it's a great channel to subscribe to if you're a writer if you're a storyteller of any type and there's tons and tons of interviews on this channel uh called film courage and um they're all very inspirational in my opinion so uh film courage is a great uh let's see film courage what's another one indie film hustle is another great one to subscribe to and look for their videos they have great interviews as well um this is more um i'm thinking more along the lines of commercial directing but there's just some great general principles as well on there's a great podcast called um uh, respect the process it's called and it's uh jordan brady is a commercial director who does that podcast and it's a great he great interviews with just super creative people with great common sense but you know stuff you can really chew on and use as a creative they're just really great interviews i just love listening to all the guys he interviews on that on that podcast so um you know it's all it's gonna be a lot of podcasts i'm talking about <laughs> that that's fine you know we love talking about other podcasts on this podcast <laughs> no sarcasm there <laughs> <laughs> but uh but the good part i mean we live in the age where you can actually listen to all these other people and get you know that we can be sharing these knowledges sharing knowledge across all these platforms back when i first started my career there was no such thing <laughs> uh, you either were lucky enough to get an internship or you weren't that's when i started in the industry you know and boy things have expanded since i mean this is pre-internet when i started in the industry you know <laughs> I forgot that like, oh yeah, there was no such thing as online resources when I first did my internship at Disney, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and it was word of mouth. So like anything you were going to get, you were going to get by either finding a way to get onto a gig and listening to people who had already worked in the industry, or you just weren't lucky, you know, <laughs> uh, it's so much more available now because there's digital content so much more knowledge so i mean yeah i, I could I, we could probably be here for a week looking like naming things that you could learn from mm -hmm. <laughs> but i think with those I, I think just at a glance you know the people in our neck of the woods um creatively especially if they're like hey i want to tell my own stories which i think more of us should mm -hmm. because you know ip is king man <laughs> i 100 percent agree with that <laughs> <laughs> i endorse this message <laughs> <laughs> i think oh nope i lied i thought someone else wrote this book never mind what oh okay no it's this book called steal like an artist by austin steal like an artist. cleon cleon i think i think i've heard of this i haven't read it but uh yeah you do you recommend it yeah i really like it like first of all it's real quick to read okay <laughs> and it's just it, oh i found a picture of me Sorry, I had, <laughs> I had a photo in here. It was it made me happy, but it, it just kind of breaks down the creative process. And one of the things that you said, I remember from this book, and was about the racing and how you shouldn't be the fastest person in the race, but you want to be uh, the person who's like is with faster racers, so you keep improving yourself. He yes. also echoes that, saying, "If you are the most experienced." person in a room leave that room yeah yeah if you're yeah if you're if you're the smartest person in the room you need a bigger room yeah exactly <laughs> well i mean just if you're just talking about your own personal growth i mean that doesn't mean that there's not some times where you find yourself yeah look yeah i'm the most experienced person in this particular room at this particular moment but if you're seeking that out regularly uh, you know you might have to ask yourself what is it you want out of this whole deal you want to be the you want to have that big fish in a small pond feeling is that what you want or do you want to be the best you can be mm -hmm. because those are two different things yeah. completely different things i want to be the best i can be so i don't care if i'm the biggest one in this room because i you know if, on my gravestone i want somebody to write like yeah he made some stuff that was actually you know kind of all right <laughs> <laughs> just like that <laughs> Just that's that's my that's my gross song. He made some stuff that you know was kind of all right. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I, I, but I, I don't want to be the guy who was like, oh yeah, you know, he was um he hung out with this like tiny little crew, and in that crew he was like a big man in that tiny little crew, you know. Mm -hmm. And but he never really reached his full potential, or you know, so many things he could have given the world had he only just thought a little bigger. Yeah. 
you know and i don't want to be that guy who, the people said if he had only like you know set his sights a little higher you know like no let's set our sights high now the worst that can happen is we set our sights high and we try to fly up that high and we fall a little bit you're not gonna die it's not that it's not kind of it's an icarus kind of deal <laughs> the worst that can happen is that we we don't achieve the thing on the first try that we tried to do but you know what the sooner we just try the sooner we can figure it out and then try again and then you know fail better like a diva. And you can have fun. Like a fail like a diva. That's gonna be the name of my book. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, if you do it right, the failing can even be fun if you have the right mindset and you're not punishing yourself all the time. And I think that's where we gotta we gotta be we gotta be nice to ourselves. Yeah. You know, stop punishing yourself for like not being perfect. Like who? Eh, why? Why do that? Nobody's perfect. There's no such thing. <laughs> That's true. Make it an adventure. Let's try to do this weird thing. Like, I'm going to try to do it. Hey, and maybe I'll fail, but I'll take notes while I'm failing. I like that. <laughs> fail, take notes, be a diva. <laughs> yes. But also, but also play nice with the other kids because if you're that kind of diva, nobody's ever going to try and fail with you again. Because at least, when, you know, people who work with me, at least I hope, you know, even if things don't work out exactly the way I plan it, I try to make it so that the experience, like you come along with me on this adventure because like we can try to make this thing and like, and even if we, eh, whatever, let's enjoy every step of trying to do it. You know, mm -hmm. let's, let's Don Quixote this thing with a smile on our face, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Love it. What was your upbringing like? I'm from an area in Queens, New York. That is a, uh, <laughs> uh, it's responsible for, giving the world a uh, run DMC, LL Cool J, Q-Tip, and Ja Rule, <laughs> you know? So it's not famous necessarily for producing art nerds, but here I am. <laughs> so <laughs> I kind of like growing up in that, in that age, I learned how to live sort of a double life. There was the life of my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And then there's the inner life of like the geek child who is much more like kids on Stranger Things. That mm. was a lot more, I was a lot more of that than I was LL, you know what I mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, but I learned how to, you know, you got to render under Caesar <laughs> and then render over here. So, like, I, you know, I was very fortunate um, eventually to find sort of my tribe and, you know, the, the tribe of, of geeks. Um, again, this is a pre-internet world. So it's not like you could just type something into the, the ether and find your tribe that way. And they can say, hey, I'm over here. I'm just like you, you know, mm -hmm. if you didn't run into them then you didn't know they existed, you know? So it wasn't until I actually got into the professional sphere and then, you know, now I'm surrounded by professional geeks like me. Then it's like the ugly duckling. It's like, oh, I'm a swan and there are other swans like me. This is so <laughs> cool. I love you swans. You're so awesome. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, in terms of my upbringing, other than that, I mean, I, I'm very fortunate. Obviously my family, like my mom, my dad, my I have two older sisters. I will say um, one of the, the things that I really lucked out on uh, as a child somewhere the switch went off that this guy is all about making pictures that's this kid is one of those kids you know and i'm very fortunate that they did not try to like stuff that back in and like no you have to be you know this other cookie cutter thing you know when i said i really want to be an artist you know i remember when i mentioned that like i think it was in the eighth grade it was a turning point i think this is going to be the career i pursue it's not going to be doctor lawyer firemen whatever you know the traditional things that parents are very proud of their kids for doing you know mm -hmm. yeah i and I, I doubled down on it like not only do i want to be an artist i want to specifically go to this high school that is a vocational specialized high school for that you know and um to their credit i mean you know who knows what debates happen behind closed doors but to their credit they allowed me to begin pursuing the life of an artist you know even if they didn't necessarily understand the whole everything that was in my head and what I wanted. They're like, this is who he is and got to let him be who he is. And I am forever grateful for that because I know a lot of people who didn't receive that sort of green light to pursue who they really were at that age, you know? Yeah. And there's no greater crime than taking a kid with artistic desires and then just saying, no, that's not respectable. No, that's, you know, it probably happens less now than it did then, but you know, there's still going to be parental limitations on understanding what a kid really wants, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. well, always, I mean, you know, you, a kid is its own thing. <laughs> I mean, that's not so obvious. Right. But you know, some parents, they forget. I, I, they forget. They're like, I want you to be what kind of, I always dreamed you were going to be. You yeah. Know? Yeah. But that's not point of being, 
well, I'm, I, I'm not going to lecture people on how to be a parent, but it seems to me that if you're going to create a brand new human being, that's an autonomous entity, <laughs> that autonomous entity is going to have their own ideas at some point that may not be your ideas, but doesn't that autonomous entity deserve to now chart their course according to their own inner compass that is leading them wherever it's leading them, right? Mm-hmm. So um, uh, if that inner compass is artistic and has a drive to to tell stories, I say, get out the way, man. <laughs> in my opinion, there are like four types of people in the world. And like to use a football analogy in relationship to your goals, there are teammates, there are cheerleaders, there are spectators, and then there is the opposing team. Mm-hmm. And for me, like anybody I know, I can probably categorize into one of those four categories. And my goal is to make sure I have as many like highest ratio of teammates possible. And if I can't have 100% teammates in my life, at least have teammates and then cheerleaders. And then if I can't have just teammates and cheerleaders, well, maybe a few spectators, but I definitely don't want the opposing team in my life. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And if I have a choice of who I'm going to gravitate towards and keep around more often, teammates for sure. You know, they're going to like block for you. They're going to help cheer you up in the locker room you know mm-hmm. <laughs> but sometimes parents can forget that like you you have to fall into one of those categories too as a parent yeah you should be a teammate parent not a opposition or spectator parent <laughs> you know but at least be a spectator if you can if you don't be the opposition if if, yeah. at least if you don't understand the kid at least be neutral and say hey whatever you want <laughs> i no never mind i was gonna talk about my cat <laughs> <laughs> oh, we gotta go. Is this a parent related thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause you know, uh, I'm letting my son do whatever he wants. So he likes to like poop in sand and sleep all day. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he's not gonna, he, at least that's not the career choice conversation. He's like, what do you want to yeah, do yeah. for a living? I want to poop in sand and sleep for a living. I mean, like, just like, you know, a decade ago, there's so many, there, there are people who pay their rent on YouTube, you know what I mean? There are people who, they monetize some stuff to the degree that these are th- career options that parents would, you know, their parents would have never been able to understand that you're not going to pay your rent doing that, talking to a camera every day, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and just uploading your own little videos. Like, no, I mean, so yes, Economies change, the way people can potentially support themselves change, life evolves. And especially as storytellers, I mean, gosh, I think if, if there was ever a time that all of us should be just saying, go for it, what the hell, you know, make your own stuff and just see what sticks to the wall and you might find an audience and that thing might, you know, uh, what's the uh, the guy with um, Lucas the Spider? You know, the little series. Oh, of the, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Josh Slice, I think is the name. Yeah. And yeah. Um, uh, kudos to Mr. Slice, man. You know, that's something that comes from him and now it's gonna he's gonna get a deal he's gonna i think he's got a deal i think you know it's gonna oh, be a I show didn't know that. i'm pretty sure it's gonna be a thing it's gonna be a thing thing oh my god i hope they're hiring oh my god <laughs> i mean you might have to google it and see where it's at in the in the in the development sort of whatever but i'm pretty sure i read a, in the trades somewhere that like, i think it was cartoon network or somebody that a deal was made <laughs> that brought such joy to my heart right right and i just love when people just like you know that again that's love you want to talk about somebody who like has a love for a thing you can tell he loves this little spider which is mm-hmm. i guess his nephew or i don't know who the voice is it's somebody i think related to him and um you, you should always love your things and that's a great example of you can tell somebody just has joy from like you can tell he just gets joy from doing that right mm-hmm. <laughs> and we need more of that in the world um, i wouldn't have come up with that idea that was his to come up with and i'm and i would root for him like all day long to make sure like if that's when if and when that show comes out i'll be the first one to be like everybody watch this show <laughs> <laughs> and we need to do that with all you know when we when one of us gets something we should all be cheerly cheerly you know drive the eyeballs to to help each other out so that you know we have more in- incentive to keep making things you know yeah <laughs> this question normally goes Outside of work, what kind of hobbies, side hustles, or interests do you engage in? <laughs> but well, yeah, what <laughs> like I, like basically, I think I told you all my side hustles and hobbies because I mean I don't know if I actually have quote unquote hobbies the way normal people have hobbies. Uh-huh. I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, I'll I'll go in basketball court and play pickup basketball. You know, that's a thing. Just I just do that to take the. Although they've chained up all the basketball hoops in 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 town i don't know if you've noticed but not you probably don't play basketball but 
they have chained up all the hoops. You can't go and just shoot hoof. Wow, that's one way to close that down, I guess. Yeah, but people can still play soccer or volleyball or whatever. They oh, didn't well, take that away. That's not fair. Right? It's basketball is getting the, the, the hit the hardest in this pandemic. <laughs> I just want to go by myself and shoot some hoop just to just to, that's my that's my um that's my yoga that's my like take my stress level all the way down you know um just running around even just by yourself just shooting hoops it there's just something about the kinesthetic the, the just going through the motions of it it's just ah okay I, I'm back to normal and they've taken that from me <laughs> I'm so uh, sorry right right that's okay. I'm also a hack musician on the side as well. I mean, I, I, I play keys to some degree. And so sometimes I, as a matter of fact, it's funny, I'm working on a song, not for me, but like a song that I would want to produce a female vocalist with. Uh, and I'd have to find some partners to do this, obviously, because it's going to be harder with this scenario where people are quarantining. But um, the reason I actually wrote the song is because I want to direct the music video. So rather than be a normal person and just find somebody else with the, or who already has a song and then say, hey, I want to make a video out of that unproduced or whatever, I want to actually write the song, produce the song, so just so I can make the video of it. <laughs> uh, so I have, a, I have a demo of the song that I've already done, and now I'm going to have to like find some music producers to team up with and find a vocalist and blah, blah, blah. I'm going to do the whole thing. I'm going to actually produce the song from scratch, and then when the, when the song's done, I want to make a video. Of the song that I produced. Well, good luck. <laughs> so it will just be like everything by me. <laughs> <laughs> Written by James. Composed yes, now, by yeah. James. <laughs> yeah, I got to find some uh, like a musician performer podcast to like, like, hey, I got to put this word out <laughs> and find a vocalist. Well, but anyway. <laughs> starting here, vocalist. <laughs> oh, you're a vocalist as well? Oh, no, no, no. I, oh, I okay. can sing, but I'm pretty sure I sound awful. <laughs> but if there are any vocalists listening, please. Oh, right, come right. Up. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's one way to put the word out, right? Um, and um, I'm trying to think of side hustles, uh, hobbies, do, 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 do. Those are pretty much like, you know, that's one thing about when you're a storyteller and that that eats up a lot of the time that you used to do other things with you know so between trying to come up with my own stories and then watching the stories that have already been made you know there's no end to the backlog of movies i haven't seen shows i haven't watched movies that are coming out shows that are coming out so there's the new stuff coming out you're trying to gobble that up gobble 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 and then there's like hey you know what i never saw uh, the pope of greenwich village or i never saw uh, harold and maude oh i gotta watch that right you know and, you know whatever and um between the two of those things, trying to gobble at the front end of what's being made and gobble the stuff that's already been made that you need to see, man, that's a lot of time. And then there's the having to now make your own stuff and feed your own little chickies. That takes time. Before you know it, like the 24 hours go by really quick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, honestly, as a creator, that's the way I want the 24 hours to go. By. Like trying to bring things into the world that come from inside you and hopefully maybe make the world a little, you know, more interesting, more exciting, more colorful, um, help people think about something in a different way or just engage with this make-believe person in, in such a way that gives you pleasure and joy. I mean, if I can bring a little bit of that, then, hey, it's all worth it. Very nice. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> what do you think are the next steps in your journey? Ooh, next steps in the journey. Now that I've talked all the talk, I got to walk some walk. That's right. So, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, if you like, if we're just going like right to the end of the journey. What's the next steps that I need to have in a journey? Sell a show, get a feature financed. <laughs> Basically, it's TV, movies, or vice versa. Um, the end result of trying to work on a film is to get that film whether it be independently financed or picked up by a studio, studio system. Either way, a feature film needs financing, of course. And um, that's as a writer-director of features. Um, as a showrunner, I obviously selling a show would be the holy grail of any one of the pieces of IP that I'm developing, um, both animated and live action. So um, yeah, that's the, the next steps are the steps toward those goals. Now there are different steps for different chickies. You know, like each one of these birds has a little bit, some have the wings that are starting to like, oh, look, you might be able to fly soon. And we'll do like a little Quasimodo. Will today be the day? <laughs> are you going to fly? <laughs> but some are not there yet. Some are mm -hmm. not at the Quasimodo level. <laughs> some are just sitting there with their mouths open like, ah, <laughs> feed me, please. Oh, I just want to be fed. I just, I just hatched. 
<laughs> but eventually, yes, all the birds, the, 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 the next steps is get all those birds flying. But if one of them can get into the air, that's one of those things that can help you. You know, it, it's it's the domino effect. You know, you need a project to, to, to finally get some heat and to go. And then all of a sudden you go from nobody to at least a nobody who made something. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Which makes you, by default, not a nobody, you know. <laughs> okay. Now is the time for rapid questions. Rapid where questions. I'll ask rapid questions. Ooh, cool. Where I will ask you a series of this or that, most likely, or yes or no questions, and you answer them as soon as possible. Okay. Are you ready? Like light, lightning round, basically. Exactly. Oh, that's such a better way to, like, save this part. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever you want to call it, or, 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 or sudden death. <laughs> so that now it's time for awesome. sudden death, where I'm going <laughs> to ask you questions that... <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, sure. That, that sounds like fun. Okay, perfect. Cake or pie? Pie. Really? Um, did I say pie? Wow. I you really did say pie. I don't think... I didn't realize I was going to say that. <laughs> well... That's, that was what was living on your heart right there, yeah, you're, pie. Yeah, I just learned something about myself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, dawn or dusk? Dusk. Does that mean you're an, a night owl? I am most certainly a night owl. As a matter of fact, I loved I love the golden hour slash you know violet. Like I I love those. That's that end of the spectrum in the sky. I mean, mm-hmm. dawn is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But like growing up, I not that you really asked me all this. Sorry, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but dawn, I always equated. Even as a kid, I was a nocturnal kid. Um, I loved staying up all night. That was my thing. You know. And of course, staying up all night and watching things. Um, but um, I associated Dawn with the, the, the nine to fivers who got in there, who put on their suits and went to work and did the straight things. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Dawn was their time. Dawn was the working folk. Night was like people who were, you know, creative and daydreamy and crazy and watch horror movies till 5 a.m. And, you know, so I always associated the sun going down with, oh, it's our time, like a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> I 100% agree with that, to be honest, because I am also a night owl and I miss being able to like stay up all night and yes. work. You know, it's funny with this with this quarantine situation, that's like cut into my whole groove so much because I am so much more productive in the night hours. And I, but I also love being at coffee shops. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. part of my whole thing is being at coffee shops that are open late. And mm-hmm. that's the first casualty of this whole thing. No, you know, nobody's open late like for coffee and you can't even sit inside the coffee shops the only ones that'll let you sit would be the ones with outdoor seating and they're Mm -hmm. only open in the early morning for the nine to five crowd Mm -hmm. so i had to shift my extracurricular stuff to early morning which is a struggle for me they chained up your basketball hoops. they chained up the hoops and they make you come into coffee shops early And they made me a morning person which i am not it's like you get up a vampire and tell them to get up at 7 a.m just so you can write that's vampires is like no this is in this is not justice I'm burning. I'm burning in the sunlight. Thank you. But I. Yeah. But you know what? You know what I don't do? I don't use it as an excuse not to write. I hate the sunlight. Well, I don't hate the sunlight, but I don't want to get up in the morning. But you know what? I get up in the morning anyway because my babies need to eat. You know? Babies need to eat. I need those little chickies. I give you get a worm for my chickies. <laughs> and if that worm is 7 a.m. now, then I got to get that early worm, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I much prefer being an owl feeding the owl chickies at night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So dusk, absolutely dusk. Unrelated, but I have this like big, it's the biggest mug I have. It's like this wide. See, it's like as big as my face and it just says night owl on it with yes. an owl. With so an you, owl. Just fill, you fill it with whatever caffeinated beverage you're having for the day. And like, yeah, everyone yes. knows what's up. Oh, yes. Owls are cool, too, by the way. Yeah, they're just cool birds. Oh, they're so cool. They're so cute. And yeah, with the swivel necks, you know. So, like, <laughs> there was an owl who would be very rude in my last apartment because we had a fireplace, and mm. it would just go on top of the fireplace and go, whoo, and you can hear oh, really? it echoing all the way down. Oh, that's kind of cool, though. This is a little rude. <laughs> But you know, other than like, it, yeah, it's but, cool but, but, it, but as 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 bird sounds go, it's not like like crows. Like, imagine if you had a bunch of crows doing that in down your chimney or whatever. Oh, that would be awful. That yes. would be absolutely awful. A crow yes. or probably a peacock would be like two of the yes. worst ones. Right, and and uh, yeah, well, yeah, 
I'd rather have a raven than a crow, though. Now that I'm thinking of all these bird sounds, <laughs> <'Cause>, you know, <laughs> you know, because a crow is like like ah ah ah, you know, mm -hmm. that's the, but the raven's more like ah. <laughs> So at least no, that would be annoying too. Just like all night, <laughs> you know, yeah. You know. You'd be like that that freaking raven's back. I yeah. don't even know. It sounds it sound like a frog, yeah. But I so saw it to compare to all of those. A who an owl it seems like much milder than all of those. You know. I mean, by comparison, yes. Yes, but then why? <laughs> She's like, but I am not making that comparison, brother. <laughs> <laughs> there was still an owl there yeah. and it just she's like it kept proper... asking who and it's like yeah. i don't know who i don't know who and she's like by the way the proper comparison is to peace and quiet that is the comparison <laughs> to be made thank you very much <laughs> which are false comparisons you know it's okay <laughs> she's like it's okay it's my podcast I will edit it out. <laughs> yeah it's gone it's like it never it's happened <laughs> What's your favorite type of tea? Or do you prefer coffee? Coffee tea. or tea? I, I'm definitely, I, I drink a lot of coffee, but I'm going to say as of late, green. I don't know. I, I couldn't, well, yeah, green. Green would be, yeah, I'm going to go with green. Good answer. <laughs> Good answer. I approve. <laughs> Matcha. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Did I say that? Yeah, you said dogs. Yeah. I think I was about to say cats and I switched it to dogs halfway through. I don't know why. Did you surprise gonna, I, yourself again? I think I said cat dogs. I like. <laughs> I was like, I ran away from the cat. Like, no, never mind. Yeah, yeah, dogs. No, no, dogs. I love them, but I love them all. But dogs. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna I don't own either, but dogs. Yeah. Will you? Yeah, dogs. <laughs> oh, will I ever own? I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's. A, I like going to play with other people's pets and then saying, "Okay, I'm done. I'm going home." <laughs> you clean up after it now. <laughs> Yeah, I got my fill. I'm like, I like, I like to lease them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take pictures with lots of people. Like, I'll take a look. Like, hey, look, I'm gonna take a picture with your doggy and and have that experience of like, oh, and then I just go home and like, I think I'm done. Yeah. So yes, dogs and and big dogs for sure. Okay. Yeah, I like to like if I am gonna play with a dog, I want to play with a dog that I don't have to worry about it being injured because I'm playing with it. Little dogs <laughs> are very like. <laughs> you'd be surprised oh like tough you'd you be... mean yeah they're really tough because oh, like okay. my mom's littlest dog like freaking does tumbles all the time and is just like <laughs> bouncing back and acts like nothing happened it's ridiculous <laughs> i had a couple friends years ago that who, who had a pair of um newfoundlands you know you know mm -hmm. the big newfoundland the gigantic fluffy bear dogs and there were two of them and they would just like i go over there and um i remember once just running around the backyard tumbling with them and like oh my god this is like it's like worldwide wrestling whatever with dogs and <laughs> and like these are gigantic animals you know <laughs> uh but i mean this is kind of fun of just like the rough and tumble it's it, there's a visceral kind of fun with a big dog you can have you know yeah that's true that's very true <laughs> ask permission or beg for forgiveness uh, I'm going to just be, you know, it's funny because like, it depends on the context, <laughs> but I'm a beg for forgiveness type <laughs> because, uh, and now I'm just, this is going to probably be an over overall philosophy and I'm probably reading way too, too much into it. But we, since we're kind of talking about career stuff, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Being proactive and going for something, you know, even if it ends up being like, oh, that was, I didn't, you know, like, uh, I, I. I didn't jump high enough to really reach that thing, but a lot of people I know ask permission to even jump. You know, um, they're 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 waiting for somebody to come along and tell them you can go for it. You can do the thing you want to do. I am now giving you permission to do it. You don't need nobody's permission to go for what you want. Go for it, even if you fail. Fine, you can beg. You can quote unquote beg forgiveness for failing. <laughs> but then after you finish quote unquote begging forgiveness, do it again. Try it. <laughs> And because again, you will only live once. And I'd rather rack up a ton of failed attempts that I beg forgiveness for than spend my whole life asking for permission and never getting it. Yeah. yeah. There'll be more exciting memoirs that I'll write anyway. Yes. <laughs> um, did you ever believe in Santa Claus? <laughs> uh, for like two seconds, maybe. I wasn't really that long. However, I did believe in the tooth very longer than... I believed in the tooth very longer than I believed in Santa Claus. I don't know why that is. That's usually the other way around. Right? But I, I disabused myself of that belief on my own. Like, it happened... It's like the scientific method. I just kind of did it 
my mom went away for like a weekend or I can't remember what exactly happened, but my tooth, I had a tooth that came out right when that happened. And I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell like my sisters. I didn't tell the babysitter or whatever. Um, I just did the thing that I was taught to do. You put it under your pillow, you know, and, da -da -da, and then you get some money. And uh, I guess everybody's got their own different version of how that works, but it's normally pillow and money, right? That's like, yeah. okay. Yeah. And so um, I did. And the next day, nothing but a tooth. Huh. No, no, I'm going to do it again, but extra sincere <laughs> tomorrow night. You know, like Friday night didn't work. Saturday night didn't work, you know, and I'm like, oh, and then I, I really felt failed. Like I had really like something, me and the tooth fairy, like we were on the outs, you know? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> like tooth fairies got beef for some reason. And so, but I stopped myself. I don't know how I came to this. I was like, let's go through a checklist and just put what happened now next to what normally happens and figure out what is the outlier what's the different thing what's the only thing that it's got to be one thing that's different and so like this is a tooth what came from this side of my face or that side of my face you know what was the pillow what side of your bed was you know were you sleeping on your back was you was the window open each time i'm like no i matched it i matched it and so okay what happened so blah 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 mom went away but i was like and then i just stopped myself mom went away Wait, the only variable is mom's not here. What does mom and the tooth fairy have to do with each other? Well, I don't get it. What is, oh. what could possibly, and then it's just like a wave of like, you're not in Kansas <laughs> or whatever. I'm like, I, the tooth fairy has only come when I share that information with my mother. Ergo. <laughs> <laughs> and then I grew up that day. <laughs> I, I, I took a step out of childhood. My mother is the tooth fairy. I get it. It's a construct. <laughs> <laughs> and just like that, I just took a step into logic and reason and, you know, literacy. And I, I didn't even bring it up anymore. I didn't even bring it up to my mother. I was like, I get it. It was nice. It was nice while it lasted. And now let's move on to other stuff. <laughs> I am grown now. I am grown I'm, now. I'm going to pay my own rent. I'm, I'm 10 <laughs> years old. I want the keys to the car. <laughs> I have business to attend to. Yes, in the I no longer building. have need of the tooth fairy. I'm going to get a job. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a word that starts with the letter Y. <laughs> Yggdrasil. Why did I come up with that one? Give me a real word <laughs> <laughs> that really so, exists. So that's a word that's the mythological tree of life in Norse mythology. Um, and so it just happens to begin with a Y. <laughs> well. But you mean like a word that's not a, yeah, a that proper sounds... noun. Exactly. <laughs> um, Yorkshire? I don't know why. It's... But that's also a proper noun technically, right? Does, does the word have to be not a name of a place or a person or a thing? Yeah, let's not do that. So too easy. a non-noun word that begins with the letter Y. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of rules. <laughs> there's, there's like there's stipulations on this thing. <laughs> um, uh, now see, now my brain's locking up. My, I was like, nope, you can't do that. Nope, can't do that. The, um, like, see, all these words are coming in that are names. Like Yemen just came to my mind. Yemen, yo, yeah, yodel. Yodel is a verb. Okay, fine. It's a sound you make, right? Yodel. Yeah, to, it's to, a sound. To yodel. Is also a verb, right? It's, it could be a noun or a verb. <laughs> I will I will accept it. I will allow you to. I, I will allow this. It's also a, a cake, right? Is it a cake? Then then they used to make you little yodels that were like the chocolate, right? Hostess would make them. Do they still even make yodels? I think. Uh... I think there's a little chocolate cake with a chocolate covering, or am I with the cream filling? Was oh, is it the one with the 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 wee -de wee -de wee -de wee? Oh, oh, I see, I see. Right. Hold on, I just looked it up. It, I'm not this... crazy, right? Yes, that was a yodel. Do they? They probably don't make them anymore, huh? Because uh... you're looking at me like I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, it's not so much I'm looking at you like I don't know what you're talking about. More so that my mom never bought me. Oh, she wasn't into. That... Yeah, she wouldn't buy me like hostess or like lunch like any, of the, any of the crap that was gonna rot in your teeth in other words exactly she didn't let me live so <laughs> uh, <laughs> well in a way she probably saved a lot of your teeth <laughs> she's like that's debatable <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if they're still making it oh yeah. wait 
it might be discontinued. But but it still it counts as a word though, right? <laughs> Even if you don't use the cake, it's still an actual Yes, it still counts. Yeah, it's still a singing method. Yes. Yes. Like trolls in Trolls World Tour. Yes, like in Trolls <laughs> <laughs> or in the sound of music or in the No, trolls. <laughs> Are we talking about trolls? This is now a trolls podcast. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much james for speaking with us today it's been a suit okay it hasn't just been a pleasure but it's been an absolute honor having someone like you (laughs) grace my podcast thank you so so much for being on (laughs) i really appreciate it do you have any social media that you'd like to share with us i shall grace your podcast with my my, um let's see do i have any Social media that I'd like to share. I'm trying to think. I, I don't like. I, I now I wish I had a podcast. I would say well, you can catch me on the the useless stuff that you didn't know that you needed to know podcast. Maybe I'll start that one. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. A, yeah, I don't really have that much uh, that I actually put out there in terms of you know my social media presence. But um, we just finished a show at DreamWorks. I can plug that. I guess. <laughs> Feel free to plug that, and wherever anyone could watch your shorts. Oh, my shorts. Well, I do have a short. It's been a while, though. Uh, Pink and Blue is the name of the short. And actually, if you just Google or YouTube search Pink and Blue, it's an animated short. And um, it's about, you know, gender conditioning and kids' toys. And it's a very lighthearted look at um, what happens on the day that the wall between pink toys and blue toys sort of comes down and they learn that maybe they can play together. (laughs) It's good, clean fun. It's a little bit of live action with a little bit of uh, CG animation as well. And uh, nice. yeah, and, um, other than that, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm in the lab, man, trying to take over the world. That's, that's me. <laughs> I need a pinky around, but the brain is definitely here. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, the listener, for tuning in. Please follow Creating Color on Instagram and Twitter and feel free to submit any questions, comments, or thoughts through our social media or creating in color cast at gmail.com. If you're interested in following me, you can find me on Instagram, YouTube, and twitch.tv at maybe it's Gaby. Thanks to Name Kaze for creating the ending theme. You can find more of his music on his SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash Name Kaze. That's N-A-M-I-K-A-Z-E. Thanks to everyone sharing Creating Color with their friends, family, and coworkers. Creating Color is a new podcast, so we appreciate any word of mouth or even help to push our hashtag on social media, Creating and Color Cast. Before we wrap up, do you have any departing words of wisdom for everyone listening? Um, life is short. Make something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. This has been Creating in Color. Keep striving, keep trying, keep creating. Bye. (laughs) Yay.